Hello, and welcome to WMW's weekly newscast, bringing you the global waste management headlines. Coming up, Juncker appoints new EU Environment Minister and combines role with maritime and fisheries. Four million UK SMEs could be illegally disposing of hazardous waste. The role of waste to energy in a circular economy. And Canadian Ford Assembly Plant achieves zero waste to landfill. The new President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, has made a surprise new appointment to the role of Commissioner for Environment, Maritime Affairs and Fisheries. The newly created post will be filled by Malta's Commissioner-designate, Kamano Vela. Until just hours before the announcement, Vela had been tipped for the youth multilingualism portfolio. Significantly, the environment portfolio has been combined with that of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries. In a letter sent to Vela, Juncker explained that the new role will require a close working relationship with the Vice President for Jobs, Growth, Investment and Competitiveness. The letter added that the green growth approach to environmental policy should be further developed as a way to promote environmental innovations which EU businesses can export. A new report published today by UK waste and recycling firm Biffa has found that as many as 80% of UK SMEs may be illegally disposing of hazardous waste, leaving them open to prosecution. The study, which surveyed 1,000 SMEs, also found that 45% were unaware that they could face fines or penalties. Ian Wakelin, CEO of Biffa, explains more. We recently conducted some research into how small SME businesses in the UK manage their hazardous waste. And we found that nearly 80% of those companies didn't really understand the regulations and were leaving themselves open to fines and prosecutions. Well, the environmental implications of not disposing this waste properly are quite severe. We are talking about particularly nasty wastes here, um, which can cause harm to the environment or human health if not managed properly. In the run-up to his appearance at next week's RWM show in Birmingham, Adam Reid, Practice Director at Ricardo AEA, has published a video blog outlining the arguments surrounding the development of waste to energy capacity in the UK. I, energy for waste, massive international topic, but, but equally really important to the UK uh, discussion at the moment, not only because well, there's debates about how much infrastructure do we need to treat commercial, industrial, municipal waste, but also what's happening with the energy market, um, reliant on imports of energy, gas, um, etc., from both Europe and further afield. Do we want to be more self-sufficient? How could we use our own uh, waste resources to better, better use? And if you put that into context with, with things like you know, increasing coal, uh, increasing gas costs, you know, you, we've got a waste stream there that in theory could be put to better use. And the debate currently is, is that the right thing to do? Or should we, in a circular economy, in a, in a closed loop solution where materials are, are, are more valuable and, and are critical to the, to the sustainability of, of societies, should we actually be a more recycling led uh, society or industry or city or, or region? So I think the debate currently is not only how much infrastructure do we need, but where's the priority on that infrastructure? Is it about recycling? Is it about energy recovery? Or is there some kind of happy medium between the two? Ford's Oakville assembly plant in Canada has achieved the company's zero waste to landfill status. Here's how they did it. Being Ford of Canada's largest manufacturing facility, we've had to work very hard as a team to accomplish this zero waste to landfill. What is zero waste to landfill? It means nothing goes to a landfill. The first thing we do is we look for every possible way to reduce the amount of materials we use each day. Less water. Less packaging. Less energy. We reuse all these plastic containers every day. And we recycle wooden pallets, cardboard and paper that comes onto the site. And that's almost 2,000 metric tons of material. That means we save over 5,000 cubic meters of landfill space. That's the same amount of space required for the waste generated in a year for a town of over 5,000 people. We even filter the water we use at the plant and the waste that's extracted is turned into energy. On that note, for WMW, I'm Ben Messenger. Thanks for watching.